Ricky Smiley Morning Show, the most funny in the morning. morning. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Just another day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Ladies and gentlemen, the senior pastor of Friendship West Missionary Baptist Church, Dallas, Texas, Pastor Frederick Douglas Haynes. Pastor Haynes, good morning. Hey, good morning, Ricky Smiley. You know I love you, bro. Always great to have praise time with you. And today, Ricky, I'm excited because we're talking about let go and let God. Listen, there's some stuff you just can't handle. And so indeed, it's important for you to let go and let God have God's way. P.J. Morton is on to something right here. Rick, I read a story about a particular sister whose heart was broken because someone that she loved so much had passed on and the grief was unbearable. And one day she's riding home home, driving home with her little child, and the song comes on that was the song of a love, the loved one that had passed away, and that just breaks her. As she's getting out of the car, she tries to grab the groceries, but, but her daughter says, Molly, don't worry, I've got the groceries, but I can't take it until you let it go, and that's what God wants everybody to know this day, and that is too often in our hurt, we try to hold on to something that is weighing us down and God is saying I can handle it but you've got to let it go so please whatever else you do let go let God have God's way because Jesus puts it like this come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden I'll give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn to me the Bible puts it like this cast all your anxieties on God because God cares for you the word of the day is come on PJ let go and let God have God's way. Have a blessed day. There it is, Pastor Haynes, man, the senior pastor of Friendship West Missionary Baptist Church. Let's get into this music. Love you, Pastor Haynes. Yes, sir. Love you, Ricky. Have a great day. Yes, sir. You too. Let's go. News headlines. Entertainment. Sports. It's the front page on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, Ricky Smiley Morning Show. It is about that time for the front page, 14 after the hour. Maria, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, RSMS family. Here's what's happening in news. Two white former Mississippi law enforcement officers were sentenced by a federal judge Tuesday to prison after admitting to torturing and abusing two black men last year. We've been waiting for this for a while. Hunter L. Ward, a 31-year-old former Mississippi sheriff's deputy who shot one of the victims in the mouth, was sentenced to 20 years in prison, while Jeffrey Middleton, a 46-year-old former sheriff's deputy who was described as the ringleader of the group, was sentenced to more than 17 and a half years in prison. Four other white ex-officers who pleaded guilty in the abuse will be sentenced later this week. In other That's news, Alabama. All of them, lock all of them up oh and, 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 they, and they mothers and, and everything that's, that's connected to their racism in Mississippi. The audacity, Ricky, for them to yeah. do this and feel like they were going to get away with it. It's just mm-hmm. sickening. It's sickening. And I hope they feel every single day in jail. Oh, um, in prison. In prison, I mean. Oh, they, oh, they will. I mm-hmm. promise you that. In other news, Ricky, in your home state, Alabama lawmakers passed a bill Tuesday that would prohibit public schools and universities from maintaining or funding diversity, equity, and inclusion programs. The bill SB 129 would also require universities to designate restrooms on the basis of biological sex. It now heads to Governor Kay Ivey's desk where it is expected to be signed into law. Lastly, if you want to win this money, y'all need to act like it. The Mega Millions jackpot is expected to climb to $977 million for Friday's drawing after no single ticket won the jackpot last night. I don't need but 5% of that. You don't need 5%. I'm good. My goodness. I'm going to more, and those are a few of today's news stories. For updates and more headlines, go to rickysmileymorningshow.com. Rock T, what you got in sports? What's up, man? Are we getting excited? The uh, NCAA tournament, men's and women's tipping off. There's a thing. We know about the final four, but there's a thing called the first four. These are teams that get a chance to play in to the tournament, and one of our amazing HBCUs, Howard University, fell short to Wagner. So they didn't make it into the tournament, man, for the play-in game. But today, Grambling State Tigers, the men's, they got an opportunity to beat Montana State Bobcats to get into the tournament. Then women's tip off as well, man. So it's going to be exciting. Speaking women's March Madness, one of the stars of women's college basketball, LSU's Angel Reese, is the latest celebrity victim of artificial intelligence gone bad after several nude images hit the Internet. Now, she says they're all fake. 
She posted on social media, creating fake AI pictures of me as crazy and weird as blankety blank, blank, blank. Some people just ain't got nothing to do. Nothing to do, man. It is what it is. So it's my quick sports report right there. Brad got the hot spot coming up next. What you going to be talking about? Coming up next, I got the headliners of the 2024 Lollapalooza, and it's in Chicago. Up next, it's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Spot. Drop it like it's hot. hot. Drop it like it's hot. So hot, yeah. Damn, that's hot. You can catch me at the hot spot. It's the B-R-A-T. All right, 29 before the top of the hour. Y'all time for the hot spot. What up, Brett? What up, Ricky? Good morning, everybody. I'm your girl, Brad Tat Tat, and this is the hot spot where we bring you music, movies, and more. So let's get off into it. Organizers have announced the lineup for the 2024 Lollapalooza Chicago Music Festival. We got SZA, Tyler, the, crea- Tyler, the creator, uh, Future X, Metro Boomin, and many others will headline this year's festival in August. Victoria Monet, Sexy Red, and Tyler will also take the stage. Okay, Tyler, the creator, and then Tyler. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. Oh, okay. Oh, Lollapalooza will take place in August, uh, 1st going. and 4th. Huh? <laughs> Um, this guy, you going? Uh, uh-uh. um, that'll be a no. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What happened? Yeah. We scared. <laughs> oh, what's that? It's gonna be in Grant Park in Chicago, and we'll feature performances on eight different stages from over us 170 different artists. Uh, tickets go on sale today at 1 p.m. Uh, <laughs> The only way I'm going is if I'm going with Brett. The pre-sales begin at 11. Oh, I got, I got. Walking behind her. <laughs> no, I mean with Brett, literally. Yes, we handcuffed oh, together. Be ducking oh, behind God. you, girl. Looking to oh, the God. side. I need yeah, protection. We... Yes, sir. Don't uh, do Brett, that. Brett, when okay. Brett, when Brett come through with her security, it'd be something serious. Yeah. I just want, I just want to be, that. I want to be in the mix. I just want to walk to the stage with her one time, dog. I swear. Brett got one dude. He look like a group of people. <laughs> uh, uh, the whole Ch- Chicago Bears offensive line. Whatever. Shout out to Big Joe. That's right. Anyway, y'all, moving on, Beyonce said that uh, she did not feel welcomed in country music. She revealed that her motivation behind releasing the upcoming uh, album, the country album, Cowboy Carter, she said, uh, to, she wrote a statement on Instagram that said, I feel honored to be the first black woman with the number one single on the Hot Country Songs chart. My hope is that years from now, the mention of an artist's race as it relates to releasing genres of music will be irrelevant. She said, it was born out of an experience that I had years ago where I did not feel welcome, and it was very clear that I wasn't. But because of that experience, I did a deeper dive into the history of country music and studied our rich musical archive. Nonetheless, it feels good to see how music can unite so many people around the world while also amplifying the voices of some of the people who have dedicated so much of their lives educating on our musical history. So, Hey, hey Brad, mm-hmm. can you imagine if Beyonce remade Dolly Parton's 9 to 5 how awesome of a song that would be and put a line dance to it. Yeah, that would be crazy. You I think she's like doing that. Jolene, though. Yeah, but I that damn, that damn the, the, the song 9 to 5, the yeah. way that song moves, that song got a really, really nice move to it, and it, it moves, you know. Yeah, uh, that would be I, I think that would be a great song for what her. What if they tricking us and they going to do that one and not Jolene? Mm-hmm. Because I could see her yeah. doing working nine to five. five what a way, way to make a make me yeah. and it, and that, That's a great song. That's a great yeah. record. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of funky. All right, y'all. Well, we're going to wrap up the hot spot on that note while we working high. Nine to five. <laughs> six to ten. Want to try to some of them wake-up calls at 866-9-RICKY. That's 866-9-R-I-C-K-E-Y. The time now is 26 minutes before the top of the hour. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Now you know. Hey, no. Hey, no. And if you don't know, now you know. HBCU. Hey, what up, though? Rock Teasy in the building. It's time for another HBC. You know. We're going to always put a spotlight on our heroes and she that attended or currently attend our historically black colleges and universities. We're going to head back down to FAMU. 
established in 1887. Home of the Orange and Green Rattlers. Also home of the Marching 101 Marching Band. Oh, we finna talk about fam. You graduate Zakaria Martin. Passed the New York bar exam with a score so high that she can practice law in over 41 states coming out the gate. Her test score was 270 out of 400. We all know that passing the bar exam is notoriously super hard. 66% passing rate for test takers. Zakaria Martin, sworn in as a criminal defense attorney, she'll be providing legal assistance to low-income families. Zakaria Martin, another proud HBCU alum of FAMU. If you didn't know, now you know. If you have an HBCU story you want to spotlight, hit us up on social media at HBCU Know. Damn it, if y'all ain't woke, your ass woke now. You better get Damn up, y'all. <laughs> we ain't playing. Damn, man. Damn, this... you, better rep- you better recognize, man. Okay, your 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 damn blood pressure got to be going up every time you do it. Like Jesus, man, you understand? You know what it's like. When that is a cup of coffee within itself. You know what it's like when you step on an HBCU campus, son. You I understand that, but everybody in the studio was sitting down. You start reading that, now everybody's standing up and like acting like they want to fight each other. What? what everybody, sit down, please. We're getting ready for the wake up call, dog. There you go, transition. What's the number, Rock T? Eight six six nine Ricky. No, say it like you said the damn thing. Eight six six nine R I C K E Y. Let's go. Bring the band music Ow. back, baby. Let's oh. go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rick's about the morning show, 8, 10 before the top of the hour. What up, Brett? Seven-year-old dad in Ohio named Adam Sizemore is facing charges after he kept calling his son's school to complain that they were giving the kid too much homework. So he called the elementary school over and over on February 29th and March 1st to say his son had so much homework that they didn't have time to hang out. I mean, that's kind of sweet, except that he was verbally abusive to the staff and used vulgar language. They say he threatened the principal at one point and told him he better, quote, put his boy, his big boy pants on. The school eventually he stopped picking up, so Adam called his local police department. And not just once, but 18 times. Uh, he kept asking to talk to the chief of police and said things like, I pay your salary. You have to talk to me. Uh, they told him he could come down to the station and talk to him in person. But he demanded the chief of police to come to his house instead. That didn't happen. But several officers did show up to arrest his ass. Uh, they charged him with menacing and telecommunications <laughs> harassment. That's, well, that's crazy. crazy. He just wants to spend yeah. some time with his son. Mm. No, come on, but you still got to, son got to have homework. Yeah, yeah, but Spend some time with your it. son helping him with his homework. The homework. There you go. Send, send some homework we know how to do. Right. We don't know how to do none of that new math. <laughs> oh, no. I don't understand that new, they wrong for that new math, though. Come no. on, yeah. now. Oh, gee, like, I couldn't do it when I was in school. Zero. I definitely can't do it now. I'm talking about, like, the simple stuff, like, uh, they made math harder, in my opinion. That's just mm-hmm. me. What do y'all think about the new math? I mean, if you ain't going to be an engineer or something like that, <laughs> do you really need all them formulas? All I'm <laughs> saying, I'm that. not using that in everyday life. Show me how to count my money. Right. There you go. <laughs> Focus yeah, on show that. Show me how to get this credit <laughs> rating up. Yeah, exactly. Show, show me how to get out on the floor when somebody starts shooting. <laughs> <laughs> That's the society we living in now. We don't need yeah. it. Like, like I, 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 I think I would have graduated with a higher GPA had it not been for math. Math always uh, uh, kept me behind, kept me in summer school uh, every single summer. And, uh, you know, I, I just hate it. I That's because math. math is racist. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Yeah. Mm. Why you say that? Because I, I couldn't think of nothing else to say. <laughs> oh, that was so cute. <laughs> man half woman it's gary i want to hip you to the tea Mm-mm, it's gary baby all right gary has the tea and the color of the day gary Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday, a beautiful, beautiful day in the neighborhood. And here's what's happening in celebrity news. Y'all, everybody's talking about it. Matthew Knowles, the father of Miss Beyonce Solange Knowles, has become, y'all, very introspective, y'all, as the 20th anniversary of the group's final album, y'all, Destiny Fulfilled, approaches. Now, they're saying that Matthew penned an open letter, y'all, for Women's History Month, y'all, to Beyonce, Kelly Rowland, and Michelle Williams on Monday, praising y'all and commemorating their beautiful journey together. He said, quote, 
It is hard to believe, y'all, that it has been almost 25 years since we began this journey. This June, wrote the 72-year-old, he said, you were just young teenagers with a dream to be best in the world, and, honey, you accomplished your dream. I thank you for your trust that you gave me to help create and facilitate your amazing journey. Then he went on to say, Beyonce, Kelly, Michelle, on this Women's Month, he said, I want to take a moment to express my admiration for the incredible talent, hard work, and dedication that each of you have poured into your craft, your relentless pursuit of excellence and unwavering truth. Trust in each other, honey, have undoubtedly propelled you to become the number one female group of all time. I am immensely proud of all of you that have achieved y'all individually and collectively. Your legacy will forever live on, continuing to inspire generations to come. And a lot of people say that is so beautiful that Matthew knows would do something like that. But what about Latoya and Latavia? They were bad the children. What so about what about Oaktown, him? Oaktown 357. I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, yeah, what about yeah. Mokin Steph? <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so, I mean, I feel so bad for Latoya and Latavia. I mean, they just didn't get included. They were Destiny's children and on Farrah, honey. You got If you're going to do that, they that? all was part of that. He's mine. You may have had him once, but I got him all the time. Oh, you oh. can't sleep, sleep at, night. at night. Don't <laughs> try to dry your eyes. <laughs> I guess, child, but anyway... <laughs> I feel so bad for the other Destiny's children, y'all. We need to keep them lifted up in prayer. Imagine you need to pen another letter to help those girls out, honey. What in the hell y'all talking about? Who was those? I remember those people. You don't remember uh, Mokin Steph? I remember, but were they part of Destiny's child? No, they uh, were no. Mokin Steph. Greatest, greatest groups of all time. I feel oh. like Oaktown 357. I know that Juicy got them yeah, yeah, crazy yeah, going yeah. crazy was my jam yeah. back in the oh, day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Juicy. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, jeez. Y'all yeah. forget about Silk oh, Times Leather, Jack. Hey, hey, hey. Man, Come forget on. about this. Got <laughs> started for Jermaine Dupree. Oh, <laughs> that's the first show. Lord. Hey, Brad, that's the first show they ever put me on opening up a Silk Times Lover. That's funny. That's JD's first group. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Times Lover. That's uh, right. That was before my time. But anyway, <laughs> congratulations to Destiny's Child, honey. Okay, that's no way. I mean, Come Rick. on, Rick. Moving on in other celebrity <laughs> news, y'all. A lot of people are happy for these women, but a lot of people say, honey, I'm sick of them. It's being reported, y'all, that Whoopi Goldberg and Sonny Hawson have joined Oprah. Oprah Winfrey, y'all, is speaking out about this oh, use, losing weight loss medication. Epic. With Goldberg saying, honey, she made the decision after hitting almost 300 pounds during, during the filming, y'all, of 22 film Till. She said, I weighed almost 300 doggone pounds when I was made Till, honey. The Goldberg said during that Hot Topic segment on The View the other day. Now, people are saying, honey, that, you know, it's amazing how all these people are coming out. Now, Goldberg, she said that she suffered, honey, from severe back pain in 2021 and was treated with steroids as part of her recovery, leading to that weight gain, honey. She said, quote, I had taken all those steroids and was on all this stuff. She said, but... Now, honey, she said, that helped me, honey, she said, because I dropped weight, because guess what? I'm using Majora, honey. She said she is definitely on Majora. It's a weight loss medication. She said later, she said that she hadn't previously noticed her weight gain. She said, I just always felt like me, and then I saw me, and I was like, oh, Lord, and that's a lot of me, honey. And Hawson said that she um, herself had dropped 40 pounds after she was using Majora. Where are these, all, these celebrities coming out now? You know what's so concerning to me specifically about Oprah is that she's built this brand over so many decades about self-empowerment, about being in control of your destiny. And it's just interesting that she wasn't able to apply that for natural weight loss in her own journey. And I'm not judging her or anything, mm-hmm. but I'm just saying because she was a brand of that ideology. Yeah. And and now she's, she, you know. She made millions, close to billions of dollars too, though. You know, I think it's not fair. They should give all those people back their money. You know, because I mean, yeah, sick because Weight Watchers. I, yeah, from Weight Watchers I mean, and she was, from she all of it. So hard. She yeah. said she donated all of that to somebody. Well, some of the proceeds to the African Museum. She said she donated that, though. But I'm mad because hell, honey, I got to take my job, but honey, but ain't nobody paying me to talk about it. Uh, and honey, she get all this. And, um, and we're going to be talking about that tonight on Dish Nation. So make sure you uh, have a uh, you know uh, watch Dish Nation tonight. Uh, exactly. You get to see the pictures. Exactly. So, honey, but, I mean, congratulations to them, though. You know, they're saying, a lot of people saying that they, by t- it's weight shaming, but, I mean, it's not really weight shaming. Some people saying that they're not doing it the natural way. What is the natural way? But, Gary, I you're mean, a diabetic for real, and you can't yeah. even get your medicine. 
Yeah, hell, I can't get it now. I'm still sitting there waiting. I've been eating all this damn sugar because I can't get my medicine. It, it makes you crazy. I want to eat. Well, the thing you about it is, medicine. is that that no. medicine, and she talked about how she would obsess over food all the time. And I think that for many people that have weight issues, it is a, a mental thing where, it's you know, disease. you're upset. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So you got to look at it that way. So I'm not judging her at all. I just think it's interesting that she's been so like yes you can do it and then that's been a struggle for i commend her for coming out because anybody mean, I, see yeah. her special um i glimpsed at it and no. stuff but she it, cried it was, it was good it, and it made a lot of sense she had doctors and people on there who who have been through things it made me understand a lot about weight loss and how it's not a choice people eat because it's like a disease it's really like yeah. not yeah there's that a, mental emotional like yeah. people turn to food for comfort yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean i've been bored and that's why i've been eating more so, but i mean i wish i could get my message it's been two damn weeks i ain't had my majora so but anyway because oprah got it tell um, you <laughs> 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 oprah uh, got whoopi, your medicine whoopi, so <laughs> 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 they, they said whoopi let me let me, let me. <laughs> Let they me get it to them the first, strip. hell. Let me take you to the strip club and get your life turned around, put back on the right track. Well, I know a woman that'll help you lose all that weight. Let's go. That's all you need. That's all you need, Gary. Oh, really? That's all I need? Yep. Uh, all all well, you need is some well, fire. Get, you, get to some, you get to some fire, you'll be good. Well, no, I guess my shoes don't stay high there, honey. You, <laughs> my shoes right, don't stay high. Right, that's how high. you lose weight. Them ankles will be running so fast. <laughs> the today, honey, is one of my favorite Kahlua. My Kahlua today is watercress. On the high end, you say watercress. And on the low end, you say beautiful khaki green. That's your Kahlua for today. Y'all go that's around. beautiful, Gary. Y'all give it up to Gary with a T. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling to wake up all my final sisters in the West Columbia. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Good morning. I'm Octavia Tensley calling from Gainesville, Florida. I want to wake my kids up. Ray, Ernest, and Tori, wake up, wake up, wake up. Calling from Birmingham, Alabama. I want to wake up Big Juice in Orlando, Florida. Wake up, wake up, wake up. My name is Jackie Ward, and I'm calling from Cincinnati, Ohio, and I want to tell Fonzo, Fat Daddy, Vernell, Aubrey, and Bill to wake up, wake up, wake up. Yeah. Wake up. Ladies and gentlemen, our favorite grandmama, Miss Bernice Jenkins. Yeah. Good morning, Jenny. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, morning Miss Jenkins. Morning. Bless them, honey favorite. I'd be glad when 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 the weather changed. It was cold yesterday, Janie. Ooh. Yeah. I had to leave my hydrant running. I don't want my pipes to freeze. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we don't want that either. <laughs> you don't want your fresh pipes if it's cold out there in yeah. your area. Leave your faucet running slow at night where your pipes won't freeze. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's our church announcing this morning. Govern yourself uh, accordingly. accordingly. Now, we are respectfully asking all members with BBLs. You know what that is, Janie? Uh-uh. That's when they put extra meat meat in their butt to make their butt bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some of them look like they done went down to Win Dixie and got a chuck roast and put back there. I seen one. I seen yes, one yesterday. Lord. I seen one yesterday at the, the makeup artist over there at Dish Nation. I thought uh-uh. it was an eclipse. <laughs> Ooh, <cherry. laughs> Gary, I thought I seen the moon eclipse with the sun yesterday. Oh. You did, Miss Jenkins. I didn't did some. <laughs> they took me up there to see the dish, the dish. What the what the, what the thing is it? Uh, 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 the dish thing that they dish do. Dish nation. Uh-huh, dish nation. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, yeah I ain't never seen nothing like that. Mm. Yes, well, there's some big ones right there. Yeah, they big, Jamie. <laughs> they big, and they asking them all to please sit on the last two pews in the back of the sanctuary because the motherboard can't fit on the first row. They can't get first uh, two or three y'all sitting up there on them butterball turkeys taking up all the space. <laughs> Janie, that's what they look like. They look like butterball turkeys in their butt. <laughs> Janie, 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 one of them. Janie! Yeah! One of them got the Holy Ghost and took off running, and I thought... <laughs> Two midgets was in a dress fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> so, you, 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 you think about getting you one, Janie? Uh-uh, no! Uh-uh. Yeah, they got them. They got them. Yes, now, now, Lord, they have them. The Ooh. pastor... <laughs> The pastor want to recognize the youth committee for uh, the painting they did in his office. It got Jesus posted in front of the car wash holding the pit bull on a leash. Uh, rocking an Emmett Smith throwback jersey and some Gucci shades. <laughs> Drinking a red bull. I'm not sure what all that means, but I uh, just wanted to say thank you for that. In the... Uh, <laughs> The funeral for uh, Deacon Grover Mills. You know him, Janie. Yeah. The funeral going to be on Saturday. He passed on after living to the big age of 81. And oh. Grover, yeah, he was married four times over the past 30 years. And they say he cheated on his first wife with his second wife. Then he cheated on his second wife with his third wife. Then he Ooh. cheated on his third wife with his fourth wife, uh, who he remained faithful to. And then he died a horrible death on last Tuesday. Uh, Grover was on his honeymoon trip with his last wife on an African safari and uh, when he was attacked and killed. I run oh. it by a, a pack of cheetahs. They got it. Uh, they said when you put it out there in the universe, it'll come back and get you. And you got ate up by four cheetahs. Ain't that something? Not only will it be a closed casket, there will be no casket because they ate him up. They ate him up. All right. Well, that concludes our church announcement. Thank you all. Y'all have a nice day. I'll call you later on, Janie. <laughs> J A H Lion Sound. Hey, appreciate you, John. Always. Yep, I'm my place, America. You don't know. Yes, sir. Uh, what up, Black Tony? By time, man. So I had got, I had got all the way to the old radio station. Had to turn around, son. Man, I had to turn around. How, how, how close, wait a minute. How, how, what street? What street? Well, how close did you get to the station? What street? I was in the park. I was in the uh, park and uh, park and road. All right, what, 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 what's the address to the station? What street did you turn on? You know what street it's on. You, I ain't got to say all that. I ain't got to prove that. I ain't, ain't nobody lying to you. Look, look. Hey, look. Yeah, right. But I had yeah. to turn around. You don't even know the address to the station. You ain't been to work so I long. Do know, I do know the address. I had to turn around and go back, and I need you to call me. When, when, when the last time you been on Spring Street? <laughs> When the last time, when, when the last time, oh, you been on Springfield, you, uh, uh, hey, hey, look, what? yeah, I need you to call Ben Trump, your uh, frat brother, I need you to call ben him, I, I'm Trump, gonna, yeah, yeah, him, I'm finna put a lawsuit on these folks, shawty, I, I, I'm trying, I ain't finna be took, uh, uh, took advantage or like this, I need, right I need, I, I, I'm finna put a, a, a three million dollar lawsuit on these folks. Cool. Man, what they did to me, don't man. This is so wrong, right here. This yeah. is so wrong, and I know it racist. I know they Are did. Are you in traffic I'm right now? What is that noise in the background? I'm in traffic right now because I'm going back to the place where I just got my brother from. But they did what me you? wrong, and I need to call Ben Troy and file me a three million dollar lawsuit. What happened? I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna take this, son. <laughs> what I happened? I'm gonna take this. What, what, what happened? What happened? That was so bad you can't come to work. I ain't gonna say that now because I don't want to mess up my lawsuit. But I had ordered me a sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit. Well, so well, well, I, what what, what it rhyme with? What it rhyme with? Uh, turgerine. 
<laughs> I had ordered me a sausage egg and cheese biscuit. Yeah. I get all the way to the radio station put uh, early. I'm finna pull up and sit in the parking space and eat my sausage egg and cheese biscuit. Yeah. Man, Shadi Dada gave me two bottom breads. Oh, man. <laughs> they gave you two what? Bottom breads. Two bottom bread. The oh, my damn sausage egg and cheese. You know how the top bread for to be thick and fat and soft. <laughs> yeah. And then the bottom bread be hard and crunchy. <laughs> right. They gave me two damn bottom bread and soda. I need to call Ben Trump. It's probably your bottom bread, man. No, it's a, it's a, it's 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 the bottom biscuit, it's the bottom biscuit bread and the and the other bottom biscuit bread, but they put them both on the same sausage, egg, and cheese. Bitch. Yeah, yo 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 sound. They, they gave you a sissy sandwich. <laughs> Hold it. He's half man, half woman. It's Gary. I wanna hip you to the teeth. It's Gary, baby. Gary has the tea and the Kahlua of the day. Gary, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday, a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And here's what's happening in celebrity news, y'all. People saying if you got some extra money laying around the house, you may could be able to purchase, y'all, this beautiful ring, y'all. They're saying back in 2013, y'all, the late Kobe Bryant, he settled a lawsuit against his estranged parents, y'all, after they tried to auction off on his memorabilia to finance their beautiful new home. What they're saying now, Kobe parents are planning, honey, to auction the 2000 NBA championship ring replica Kobe gave to his wonderful father. Now, um, it's been reported y'all, that Kobe's 2000 NBA championship ring was his original, or this was an originally gifted y'all, to his daddy, former NBA player Joe Jellybean Bryant, is up y'all, for sale at Goldwyn Auction, notably Goldwyn. Now, specify that y'all, it is not the executive ring given to players themselves upon winning a championship. However, y'all, it is the exact, you hear what I'm saying, the exact same ring given to Brian, y'all, and his fellow Los Angeles Lakers. Now, they're saying Brian ordered an extra ring, y'all, upon winning the 2000 championship, and he gave it to his father. He gifted it to Joe Jellybean, y'all, and they said, now that ring is for sale. Now, they said this is not the first time, y'all, that the memorabilia initially gifted to Brian's parents made its way on the market back in 2013. Kobe settled a lawsuit with Goldwyn um, relating to memorabilia that his parents wanted to sell. Now, they're saying that settlement allowed for less than 10% of the items initially slated for the auction to actually be sold. Now, this ring is the only one Brian ever, y'all, gave to his father. Y'all. And they're saying the authenticity of it is definitely real. Do y'all find that so, sad? What, 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 yeah. Yeah, that yeah is it sad. is, man, actually. That is sad. His family that's ever the only did. thing that his father has left that he gave him, and he's... Yeah, they don't have no money. I think his wife, if that's the case, his wife should give his her, her well, parent, her father-in-law some money. I think they, I think Kobe they and their, their, yeah, yeah, Kobe and his parents didn't have a good relationship. Whatever <laughs> happened, you know, so probably the wife feels like she's not finna. She got a whole family to take care of and support, and she's not. Yeah, supporting but she is them. filthy yeah, rich. I, that's I, those I, kids' yeah, grandparents. Now, if I was them, I. Would, now that Kobe Kobe is out of the equation, I would like you know uh, have some time to think about it yes. and just give them something. If, if y'all can't especially say if that, you, yeah, yeah, but I'm y'all just, can't say I, that. I, Not if Kobe confided in his wife and felt a certain way, she is going to abide by what Kobe's feelings yeah. are. Were. What about those kids that they grandparents? Maybe they don't look at it like that. I it's, wonder what happens. Wonder whatever what, it is, for some reason she's not doing anything. Yeah, so. But I saw pictures of the kids with Kobe's sister, so they're on good terms. Because Vanessa posted t- pictures of them oh, they together. Just, oh, they took yeah, a picture, so and they imagine ran into each other at the market and said, let's take a picture. Well, so. it seemed like they were in a cozy home setting. Really? Yeah. 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 I, I would, I would, I would um, think, I think it would be nice if if uh, Kobe's wife and Kobe's uh, parent got, you know, had some kind of relationship or whatever. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes that brings you closer to that that person, you know, yeah. at least be around his parents. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to sell the ring, honey. And that was his you know, first one. Your, yeah, that is sad. But nevertheless, we're going to follow this story. Hopefully, Vanessa listen or somebody listen and tell her, honey, we are very much so empathetic with the parents and her, but something should resolve. All right, moving on. In other celebrity news, y'all, this is a sad story, y'all. You remember two years ago, R. Kelly's prison commissary, y'all, which, honey, contained only $28,000. 
um, was confiscated and used, honey, as restitution for one of his victims. Well, they're saying R. Kelly is still fighting, y'all, to get his commissary back, y'all. According to court documents obtained by um, Hip Hop Docs, they're saying a hearing on the matter, y'all, was scheduled for Monday, honey, and they're saying that, you know, R. Kelly needs his commissary. Now, back in March of 2023, they're saying the Illinois Supreme Court ruled Heather Williams was entitled to access the disgraced singer's label fund, which was reportedly valued at $1.5 million in 2020, according to the um, billboard. You know, now, uh, they're saying the following. In August, honey, they're saying the U.S. District, um, you know, Judge Miss Ann Donnelly signed an um, order demanding that Kelly and his label, y'all, Universal Music Group, turn over more than a half a million dollars royalty. They're saying in which, you know, it was signed on um, recently, previously demanded that, y'all, the ignition singer, y'all, turn over $28,000, which was in his prison canteen. Mm. What's a canteen in prison? That's the, like your bank in prison. Yeah. And he had to give up his stuff? Yeah, the money. What? what kind of deal do you think he had in terms of publishing and royalties? Did he own stuff or like yeah, was it through wrote, the label? Yeah, he wrote and produced all his So he's getting a stuff. constant flow of money. Yes, but yeah. it's probably being confiscated. Yeah. It for, is. For, you know. The judgments against and him, right? And all the cases. The cases. Yeah. yeah. I thought commissary was food and stuff. That's, that's what food you, is it's like toiletries, toiletries and yeah. other little trinkets. Well, why are he fighting for his commissary and they're talking about money? I mean, that's the only that's the only bank that's situation what it's you have too, when you're in the prison. Money. Oh, okay. Right. Well, let's keep our kid lifted <laughs> in prayer, honey. He just he, he girl can't stand up and asking all these questions. And then he like went to he jail like everybody there. else, right? <laughs> yeah, but Rick, I ain't never had no commissary because I wasn't there long enough. I How mean, long we have these two here that knows, huh? How long was you in there? Oh, a day, Yo, uh, a were, night. You a day lie. They didn't get you when y'all stole them clothes out of Neymar Marcus at the Galleria in Houston. That wasn't me, honey. I wasn't sure with them, but honey, they did get those girls. Oh, you said that was Miss somebody else. Oh, that was Miss Sherman. I told you they used to run out of the store with a mannequin, baby. Oh, oh with the whole mannequin. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Baby. When a girl, if a girl had a show to perform that night, baby, honey, and she wanted to dress, and it was right there on the mannequin that name of the bitch, they ran out oh. with the mannequin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Sherwood. <laughs> wow. Yes, baby. That was the good old days. Oh, wow. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so the girl got to do shit. Are, are, are y'all still banned from the gallery? Real. Oh, I could I could go to the gallery. I don't know if I'm sure with them. I had seen that girl in years, honey. But, <laughs> so, yeah. but anyway, hey, girl. All right, the color today, honey, is one of my favorite color. My color today, y'all, is watercress. On the high end, you say watercress, and on the low end, you say khaki green. That's your color for today. Oh, All right, y'all, give it up again with the team. <laughs> Party people, it's Wellness Wednesday, and uh, we are dedicated to working on our physical and mental health all year. Joining us this morning, the one and only Dr. MJ Collier. Dr. Collier, we happy that you're here today all over the news this morning, and uh, there are headlines about uh, the intermittent fasting can potentially be harmful to your health. Uh, how you feeling, man? I'm feeling great, Ricky. Thank you so very much. That frog is finally going out of my voice, mostly. <laughs> So and 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 uh, and the first lady has now allowed me to kiss on the cheek. So so we are good from that perspective. So good morning, Ricky. Rock T, Special K, Gary with the T, and to the ladies, Maria Moore and the Brett. So Ricky, thank you once again for the opportunity to bring healthcare information to the listeners of the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. So good, great topic. We're going to continue in the discussion that was you guys were having earlier about the weight loss special, Shane Blaine, and the weight loss resolution. So, Ricky, we've gone full circle. At first, everyone was glad to say that they had lost weight using the new injectable medications, semiglutide, which goes by the brand name Ozempic and Wegovy, and Terzepatide, which goes by the brand name Manjaro and Zepbound. Then the backlash started over people losing medicines. People say people were taking the easy way out and they needed to, to change their lifestyles and dedicate themselves uh, more to their health, etc., etc. So then people started denying, denying, denying. Not me. That's not what I'm doing. I'm working out seven days a week and all of those sorts of things. But with such dramatic weight loss, Ricky, 15 pounds or more for every 100 pounds of weight, the transformations were undeniable, so people couldn't deny. Now, we've right. always had celebrities such as Shaq and Charles Barkley who admitted to using these medications. Men seemed to not have any problem with it. And now Oprah came out with her special, and she finally admitted to using these medications. So you see that they work. 
and they have great results. Now, Ricky, these medications were initially prescribed for diabetes. They lower blood sugar and lower A1C levels in an amazing fashion. It's almost like a person doesn't have diabetes anymore. Doesn't cure it, but basically makes you as if you don't have diabetes. But they started noticing other benefits in those people. Decreased heart attacks and stroke rates and improved kidney function. So now the FDA has approved indications for those meds for people who are not diabetic. And you got cardiologists who are heart specialists and nephrologists who are kidney specialists who are treating patients with these medications. Now, why does that happen or how, how does it work? We don't know. The exact mechanism of action is, is not known, but the benefits are very well documented with decreased heart attack, decreased stroke rates, etc. So the side benefit is the weight loss. So if you're overweight and your journey to good health includes these medications, you will have health benefits that will add years of good health to your life. Now, so intermittent fasting, Ricky, uh, a great, great documented that it works wonderfully. I recommend it in my weight loss clinic. At, there are two options that I recommend, uh, eating five times per day, which is breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and a snack in between the two, or intermittent fasting. Uh, documented that this works wonderfully and gives you great benefit. The issue is that people need to stay on a fixed schedule and not uh, break it up. Now, intermittent fasting means various things. Now, the, the plan that I'm talking about is basically eating everything that you're going to eat in one eight-hour period. Okay, uh, there are other intermittent fasting where people don't eat for three days or don't eat for one week or go on, uh, you know, the hot pepper diet and all those sorts of things. That's not the type of intermittent fasting I'm talking about, and those can uh, be harmful to your health, causing everything from acute kidney injuries to dehydration. But uh, a, a regular program of, of only controlling when you eat is not really important what you eat. Now, that doesn't mean you can eat Krispy Kreme donuts all day. It does mean that if you eat reasonably in that eight-hour period, uh, nine to five, eight to four, whatever works in your lifestyle, that you will have uh, good weight loss with that in maintaining your health. All right. All right. That's good stuff right there. Let's go to the phones. You're on with Dr. Collier. Good morning. Hi. Yes, I'm Sharon, calling from Columbia, South Carolina. My question is, I have a question about cortisol. I do have an endocrinologist appointment coming up, but I'd like to know what forms of treatment are provided for those with high stress levels of cortisol in their system. Okay, cortisol, thank you so much for calling in. Cortisol is the stress hormone that results in increased predominantly abdominal fat, so that belly fat uh, is responds to that stress hormone. And there are, one, de-stressing, things that help de-stress you, uh, controlling inflammatory disease states such as high blood pressure and diabetes. And there are direct treatments to lower cortisol, but that's really pretty aggressive, and you probably would not qualify for that unless you had very difficult to control high blood pressure or your blood sugar was totally out of control. But uh, again, the main thing is just controlling those inflammatory disease states, which are part of what's called the metabolic syndrome, and decreasing your life stressors. Amazingly enough, one of the biggest stressors that we have is sleep deprivation. Most people are getting less than six hours of sleep per night, and even if they are sleeping, they're not getting six hours minimum of restful sleep. Nobody gets eight hours of sleep, so six hours is what we strive for, but it needs to be good quality sleep, so we, they'll also test you for things like obstructive sleep apnea as well. Can't sleep, got to pee all night. All right, you're on with Dr. Collier. Good morning. I'm calling from Akron, Ohio. And my question for the doctor is, um, is it normal to experience extreme pain after getting an epidural when giving birth? Um, well, she didn't call in from no. a doom buggy. <laughs> <laughs> from, from Ohio, O-H-I-O. Uh, of course, there's no uh, such entity. Pain is always an indication of pathology. There's something wrong. Uh, childbirth itself is very stressful uh, on a female's body. And nowadays, we expect a woman to, to have a baby and go back to working in the fields like the next day. That's not it. There's a substantive and significant recovery time that may or may not be related to having the epidural. Uh, but uh, the childbirth process itself, particularly, even if it was a C-section, if, if it was a vaginal delivery, the trauma to the female's body is something that it takes a while to recuperate from and it also depends on what your health status was prior to delivery so if you were not in good shape or overweight or having some issues with your health prior to delivery going through the health process is i'm going through the birth process is one of the most challenging health challenges that you will have in your life all right y'all with dr collier good morning hi i'm calling from georgia and i am calling regarding my gallbladder just trying to see you are there any other uh, alternatives other than gallbladder surgery um, dealing with your gallbladder? Have 
uh, sickness in the right side of my um, abdomen and just wanted to know, are there any health things or anything to do pertaining to the gallbladder other than having surgery? Uh, it, it, the gallbladder's purpose is to, to hold him and, and store <clears throat> bile. Bile is used to digest fat. So if you eat a fatty meal, uh, then your gallbladder squeezes kind of like a perfume atomizer, and then it pushes bile into your stomach and that bile, which is very toxic. It's very caustic, and it helps to dissolve fat. Now, if so one of the main things to do is just avoid fatty fried foods, and that will limit uh, gallbladder symptoms. If you have a small gallstone, Gallstones can be made of calcium or uric acid, and uric acid stones sometimes can be dissolved by medications, but uh, uh, calcified stones, they're not going to do that, and cholesterol stones, they, they will have to be physically removed. A large stone, believe it or not, is actually a better option for you because it normally it can cause temporary obstruction uh, using what's called a ball valve effect, and just the position of your body, you can move that, and then it'll give you relief. But if you have a small stone that's obstructing the bowel duct, then the only option for that is surgery. If that bile starts to back up into your pancreas, it can result in pancreatitis and a lot of other health problems. So the great thing about the gallbladder surgery is now they go through your belly button, it you know, at least three tiny little scars, and it fixes the problem almost instantly. Uh, without a gallbladder, though, you will be susceptible to explosive diarrhea if you eat uh, high colloidal foods like a high-fat meal because there's no bile to help dissolve that. And so you can't go to, you know, the place where all you can eat and, and make it out of there before you have to no. run to the toilet. Oh, so you yeah. have to be no. very careful about what you eat and how you eat it once you've had gallbladder surgery. Yeah. Turn into a weapon after that. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Garley, <laughs> let everybody know how you can be reached. Okay, Ricky, I can be reached on all social media at Ask, A-S-K-D-R-M-J. And I do want to make note that the Atlanta Medical Association is hosting their annual scholarship fundraiser this Friday here in Atlanta. 7 p.m. at the Foundry at Puritan Mill. Ricky, the average cost of a 10 medical school now is about $206,000. And our purpose, our passion is to help struggling students attend medical school who are smart enough and they have the desire to attend, but they're financially challenged. So the Atlanta Medical Association's job is to raise funds to help support the education of those students. For more information, go to ATL, AtlantaMed.org, and come hang out with the doctors. Come meet docs that look like you. Meet new people. Join us on Friday at the AMA Scholarship Ball. So, Ricky, these are the opinions of Dr. MJ Collier. Not those of Ricky Smiley, the Ricky Smiley Morning Show cast, or its production crew. Remember, go to my YouTube channel at Ask Dr. MJ for more information on staying healthy and look at my thousands of videos on various healthcare topics. Go to the website, lifeofjobs.com, for more information on supplements that can keep you healthy. One more thing, Ricky. Yeah. Stick stay. Don't you dare go away. You listening to Dr. MJ on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. That was for Rock Peasy. Come on, Wayne. Uh, we, we, love that, doc, we love when you do that, Dr. Carl. <laughs> Why have you all sound like cool Mo D? Yes, I sir. love it. The, <laughs> the original. Dr. Yes, sir. Dr. Dr. MJ. Call me, y'all. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Fix the Jesus. Moment, I tell y'all, this is my favorite part of the show. Y'all know I love me some Fix It Jesus, y'all. We got the one and only, the one and only Jackson State University's own member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Oh, Ladies what? and gentlemen, comedian extraordinaire, Rita Brent. Come on. In the building. What up, Rita? Good morning. What up, Rick? What up, y'all? Uh, what up, so Rita? Got... Hey, Brett, there so you go. I know, I know. Brett. What up? <laughs> All right, Brett. I think you're going to like this edition of Fix It Jesus, okay? Uh -oh. So All right. we know Easter is right around the corner. We're going to hear all the greatest hits in church. He rose from the dead. I know it was the blood. <laughs> Jesus is alive and well. <laughs> but I, I call wind of a new song that I don't think God, Jesus, or the Easter Bunny approved of. Hit that, hit that from the day. He washed me in the washing dishes.
that choir director brought up on charges. Is detergent. <laughs> wash blood <laughs> is the detergent. <laughs> they didn't even have a washing machine when Jesus was alive. Everybody was just walking around committing sin and being musty, first of all. So... <laughs> <laughs> and I know when he put Gary in the washing machine, that was the first time he used softener. <laughs> he sure did, fly baby. Oh. And she was downing too. That's See what you did there. Oh, you said she was downing. She was downing, honey. Snuggle. That's where nah. he got snuggled from. <laughs> yeah. Let's be clear. Yeah. <laughs> but, but we need. We need Jesus to fix it to that point because you can't say Jesus washed you in the washing machine, but don't specify which detergent he used. Hit that for me, Dave. <laughs> Oh, he washed me. He washed me. Oh, he washed me. He washed me with tide. He washed me with gain. He put me in the rinse cycle, and now I'm born again. He washed me with some cheer. Now I don't have the spirit of fear. He washed me in arm and hammer to make all the demons scatter. Jesus be some fabric softener and some good communion crackers. So he washed me up. And he spin me around he me. And he placed my he clothes On solid ground He said he washed me In the washing machine He washed me he he Put me on delicate Wash me In the washing machine He washed me he oh, Put my clothes in the dryer So they don't get sour he Put my clothes in the dryer So they don't get sour oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dryer ending. Read up. That's the dryer. Read up. The way they did the dryer. Oh, did the dryer cut off and put that little buzz and sound? Read right up. Yeah, that was it. That was it. You got to take them out. And you get them clothes out that dryer. <laughs> get them out. I literally cannot breathe. Wait a minute, bro. Why the thing? Why the why the buzzer went off on the dryer? Read Why you why you come on the radio show and do stuff like this? Come on, man. Look, man, oh. you gotta have that buzzer sound. Yeah, so yeah, yeah we need Jesus to fix it. Y'all can yeah. follow me on social media at Rita Brent Comedy, R I T A B R E N T Comedy, to see this full clip. We ain't doing this no more. I'm done. Rita, Rita, that's it. We ain't doing fixing Jesus next week because you're doing too much. I was I, I was all right until you put the buzzer on there. Now that upset me. Can't, we can't do it. We're gonna have to talk about that. Y'all give it up. Rita Brent, y'all. <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, man. More Ricky Smart in the morning show coming up. Beef in the room uh, this morning. We have to let everybody know what's going on. We sit here. We do this morning show every morning. Then we just have our problem children on the morning show. For real. And uh, the one that have to be separated from the rest of the class, like elementary school, like everybody. Gary, what's the problem? What's the problem? What's the problem? Well, first of all, it wasn't a problem with me. I had a problem with y'all. So, but, okay. Uh, this what do we, what this we do this today? This today. is true, honestly. I'm, this morning when I woke up, the Lord told me, you know, treat your coworkers to breakfast. So Which I decided, never does. yeah, but so I decided that I was gonna treat them to breakfast. Okay, treat I them. told him like, 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 like that was so rich. Treat them, <laughs> yeah. treat them, like like but we my, like like we the, like some little poor kids are starving. Well, somewhat, but I will treat. say this before I go further. Now, you and Brad, I don't mind y'all because y'all are generous with y'all food and your money. Y'all always treat me and whatever, but these other ones, no, order what you've been ordering. Don't <laughs> sit here, honey, and try to order no extra. Don't do none of that. But you yeah. was tripping by the condiments. What? Yeah, but they it don't, don't even charge extra for the condiments. Yeah, but I was tripping for the condiment. But then y'all talking about a damn extra biscuit or extra and, sausage, and extra sausage, honey. Beyonce had about fruit. No, mine yeah. came with fruit. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't know that until you said it later. The fruit we placed her hands. Tell, tell, tell her about. Tell her about it. Let's start on. Tell her about what did you order, Gary? Well, I ordered. Yeah, me and Brad used to get. Well, we ordered from two thumbs down. But um, <laughs> me and Brad always get catfish, grits, and eggs. Uh huh. And that's what okay. we got. Now Beyonce them and Maria get the same thing. They all get the same thing. But Rick, this is how I am. I, y'all different from me. I'm not going to sit here, honey, and let people order all this food and spend all my money. No, I'm Gary, not doing that because it just doesn't Gary, make sense to me. I'm giving you a budget. What? Gary, you, you do this once a year. <laughs> once yeah. a year. This, this, okay. this, was, this was $35 for all this stuff. <laughs> okay. $35. And? Once a year. You do Dish Nation and the morning show, and we be putting you on shows. Okay. And you sit up here arguing about some, some, some damn ketchup and mustard and jelly packs. 
Yeah, but it's just stuff like that just bothers me. And then Maria go talk about getting a damn woman a, a $20 tip, and you just picking up the damn food. Are you crazy? What I'm saying, it was a lot of orders. I don't care. It was a stack of orders. I don't care. And that was less than 20%. I don't care. You don't give no $20 tip to that? pick up the food. No, I didn't do it. She was looking at and me you crazy. Up there and you had on a damn uh, a brand new Burberry jacket that you wore on Dish Nation yesterday and tried to act like you don't have nothing, and then you got all this damn. <laughs> Your uh, jury on. Why you? But that don't have nothing to do with the price of tea in China. Y'all not for to sit here, honey, and spend all my damn money on food. And you know, of course, of course, Brad is Big Bang Hank. She throwing a damn <laughs> twenty over there. No, ma'am, take that twenty back. I am not Big Bang Hank, but we, those people work too, and they get treated poorly sometimes. And people like you only give them like a dollar tip or two dollar tip. I know they just you feel like they just punched it in the machine, but they had to do other things before that. They had to do other things with other people's orders, and they had to fix our order or just bag it, whatever they had to do. They deserve a little extra. We're not no 20. Why not? Um, you must be out your damn mind. You think I'm giving you give you a twenty dollar tip to go just and um, sometimes give the bag? They have to split it with the chef. Blessed is a oh. cheerful giver. Yeah, and uh, and I was cheerful. Say, I say that again. Read the script. Pull up the scripture. Uh, Blessed uh, is a cheerful giver. Read the whole scripture. The whole scripture. Needs well, God to be, pull loves. That, pull that uh, up. What is it? So Gary, read you, it. Gary, what you saying is read the scripture. We need. We got to first find what chapter. Is the in. next line in the scripture said, "Gary, stop being stingy." That was in <laughs> the Bible. I wasn't yeah. being stingy, honey. I was, honey, doing that. For, I'm sorry, Ricky. When I go out with my friends, honey, we going out to eat, y'all. You got a twenty dollar budget. Everybody get $20. Where, 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 y'all, where y'all going to? A hot dog stand? Uh, wherever we go, honey. Now, I have a friend. Now, me and Ken, we know how to eat. a $20 budget for everybody. $20 but budget. 20 <laughs> each. A $20 budget each. Y'all not going okay, to sit well, here and put all my damn money on no food. For, for, for $20, Captain You can't D. get nothing to drink. Yeah, but that's not uh, just y'all don't need nothing to drink. Y'all better drink water, just like y'all did this morning. He did. Drink he, water. he made us drink water. We had to go get <laughs> no, them styrofoam no. cups and, and get water out the little water. No orange juice. No, 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 no orange no juice. No coffee. No, no coffee. And when Brad said coffee, I thought she was talking about the damage coffee. Uh-uh. You had a heart attack when <laughs> yeah, she said she right, wanted baby. to add that to her yeah, order. Yeah, honey, drink this water, and honey, just, and, and, and wash just, it down. And, and the, the way you just threw the food at us like we just some dogs. <laughs> well, I mean, you some, know, some I, I could read this dogs. far across the room, so he'll eat this at it and um, grit your teeth and be happy. And now we got to hear about you bought us breakfast for the rest of, until we're you the buy the rest of again. our lives. Yep. <laughs> well, y'all lucky that, but March. I ain't asking for a W-2 form to write it off on my taxes. How about oh, that? my God. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, 26 minutes after the hour, y'all got your front page right here. Maria, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. The front page is brought to you by Lowe's. Power through your spring at Lowe's with Ego, the number one rated brand of cordless outdoor power. Lowe's knows home improvement. Good morning, RSMS family. Here's what's happening in news. Ricky, the FBI in Houston has arrested three bank robbery suspects. Their ages, 11, 12, and 16 years old. What they robbed? Uh, Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, they they robbed a Wells Fargo bank, Ricky. I know you lying. At I what age? 11, 12, and 16 years old. How did they get? get? Oh, my God. They have video on uh, ABC News, and they were seen oh brandishing a weapon. Uh, so because they're juveniles, their names and no additional details will be released. But them babies was in there trying to get that money. Yeah, your kids yeah, out there. Yeah, they they not. And, and that's a whole conversation we need to have. We was talking about that uh, yesterday. Parenting and, and it takes a community uh, of people to raise a kid. And the stuff that we are seeing. I, I, we never would have heard a story like this in the 80s. Ever. Yeah. Yes, out of control. Ever. They got the to video the footage. Where you got everything. a kid nine years old involved in a bank robbery. That's unheard of. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll continue to provide you with updates at rickysmileymorningshow.com. In other news, taking a look at politics, Bernie Marino, a Cleveland businessman. Hall- okay, they went in there with some Halloween masks. <laughs> For party city. <laughs> They they did look like they ain't know what they was doing, it was, Ricky. It was Casper the Friendly Ghost, <laughs> Wonder Woman, in uh, the brown bomber. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Give me all the change. Ain't take number of change. Give me all the quarters. In other news, Bernie Marino, a Cleveland businessman. All the cereal out of Winn Dixie. <laughs> 
will win the Republican Senate primary in Ohio, according to a CNN projection. Now, although he was endorsed by Trump, Marino's win is also a victory of sorts for Democrats whose spending in the race suggested they viewed him as the weakest candidate against Brown. So this is really big. It's going to have some implications in terms of the Senate and it possibly flipping. Cannot nah. lose that nah. seat. Yeah, he, he's very extreme. Yeah. He's going. He's going to run independence away from it from them. Right. So yeah, that's yeah, a win and, for the Democrats. Uh, uh, and that seat in West Virginia, uh, I think that uh, senator is about to retire. Uh, Joe Manchin. That, yeah. Yeah. Joe Manchin is a Democrat, but always you know vote against Democrats. But right. uh, yeah. I think he's retiring also. So yeah, it's going to be crazy. Yeah, and people just have to understand the importance of also voting in your local elections because if you have uh, Biden getting reelected, you know, there's only so much a president can do on either side uh, with uh, the— Got to have control of the House. The House, yeah, the Senate, all of that. So um, definitely something to keep in mind as we head to the polls in November. Uh, lastly, a whole lot of money is up for grabs, y'all. If you want to win this money, you need to buy a ticket. The Mega Millions jackpot is expected to climb to $977 million. I hear folks saying it's going to hit a billion by Friday. Yeah. No single Jesus. ticket won the jackpot on Tuesday. Man, I just, I'm just asking. Jesus, you know I've been going to church on Sunday. I only need 3%. Sunday school. I pay my 10% tithes and offering. I treat everybody right. And, and and read the Bible every now and then. I don't even be on uh, certain websites no more. God, I'm trying. Certain websites. What websites oh. would those be? He said certain. Uh, what? what websites would those oh, be? Oh, bigbooties.com. <laughs> I'm Maria Moore, and those are a few of today's news stories. For updates and more headlines, go to rickysmileymorningshow.com. Rock T, what you got in sports? He floating around out there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man, as we uh, get into March Madness, the tournament tipping off, the first four games of, uh, are being played right now, the men's and women's. But uh, as one of the stars of women's college basketball, LSU's Angel Reese is the latest celebrity victim of AI gone bad after several nude images hit the Internet. She says they are fake and posted on social media. Creating fake AI pictures of me is crazy and weird as... You know what? People ain't got nothing else to do, man. It is what it is. So everyone's asking me, okay, Rock T, you put the challenge out there for your who's going to be in the Final Four in the men's and the women's. So in the men's, my Final Four prediction, I think they got it right with all the number one seeds. And I think every number one seed is going to get to the Final Four. UConn, North Carolina, Houston, and Purdue. On the women's. We don't care. We only care about women's basketball because it's way more exciting. Exactly. I'm sorry. I, man, let me tell you something, man. I wouldn't be. I told y'all yesterday it's gonna be more people watching women's basketball, the women's tournament, than the men's tournament. It is I what it is. You. Watch what I tell you. I want to see our uh, uh, Iowa and South Carolina, LSU, and our Tennessee is pretty good. Uh, I, I just want to. I, I cannot wait. It's coming, man. Women's basketball. College basketball is 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 so freaking exciting. I love it. Yes, sir. So the final four in the women's, I got South Carolina, Iowa, Yukon, and Texas. That's my final four on the women's bracket. So we're gonna see how many Cinderellas pop up. Wait a minute, say that again. South Carolina, Texas, Iowa, and Yukon. That's my final Not four. I don't think they're going to get to the Not Final LSU. Four. I don't think they're going to get to the Final Four this year, dog. All these people listening to Simon Show in Baton Rouge, you ain't going to put I, LSU in there. I don't, look. man, they got That's some That's one of dogs. the number one look. radio stations that we are. We are on the radio in Baton Rouge. You ain't going to say LSU. Let me tell and you And they something. won the national championship last year. Let me tell you, you something. You just going to count out like, act like Angel Reese ain't living? Angel Reese, Michaela Williams, you know, Van, Haley Van Lift. They got some really? dogs over there, man. I ain't going to lie, but I think somebody going to snap them. Somebody going to snip them this year, man. Oh, my God. We about to get taken <laughs> off the radio in Baton Rouge. That's the, that's the, that's the magic I'll of the tournament, man. Damn. Yes, sir. I the love whole it. state of Louisiana got to sit up here and go to work with that in their brain for the rest shout of the out, morning. Hey, shout out to Flage Johnson. I mean, they got some dogs on the squad. Now, don't get us and twisted. And then you need to pick, pick some teams where we not even on the radio. Man, be, oh, my God. <laughs> Man, go on to the next thing, bro. I'm, I'm all, disgusted. Hey, y'all can follow me on social media at Rock T. Holler. Let's talk Super about Dave, it right do now. Do you agree with that? <laughs> Super Dave. Shout out to Flaugier. She was on the that? rap game, too. Hey, Flaugier off the chain, man. For real. Yeah, oh, yeah, my yeah. God. This is, this is hey, just terrible. We're rooting for him, but I'm just calling you like it is, dog. Man, come on. Let's do the hot spot. I don't want to talk Let's about go. it. Let's <laughs> go. Oh, Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. So hot, and hot. You can catch me at the hot spot. It's the B-R-A-T.
Everybody that's listening to us in Baton Rouge on behalf of the Ricky Smiley Morning Show, we apologize for him not putting the LSU women that fought for the national, the standing national championship in in the top seed in the in the uh, 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 four in the bracket. In the five, is, I, I hope I'm wrong, dog. I hope I'm wrong. Oh my God, that's just different. I hope you give him some motivation to kick somebody's ass. That's for sure. Brett, good morning to you. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, to everybody. I'm your girl, Brett Tat Tat, and this is the hot spot where we bring you music, movies, and more. And I wanted to shout out Flage Johnson because she was on uh, the rap game with myself and Jermaine Dupree, and she killed it. She's a great MC. All right, y'all. A witness in uh, rapper Young Thug's racketeering trial told the jury he was going to fall asleep on the stand because he was so high right now. Adrian Bean was called by the prosecution on Tuesday in the long-running Young Slime Life racketeering trial against Jeffrey Williams, better known as Young Slug. Young Slug. Young Thug. Uh, the state was hoping that Bean would be able to establish that Young Thug was at the scene of a drive-by shooting on September 11, 2023. But he has not offered any helpful information in the case so far. And when he took to the stand, uh, he had to ask for water. And then he said, I'm so high right now, y'all. I'm about to go to sleep on y'all now. He said, I am. The judge didn't allow the lawyer to bring Bean a bottle of water and allowed the testimony to continue. Throughout his testimony, he has claimed that he cannot remember the shooting or the subsequent car crash because he was frequently on drugs throughout 2013. <laughs> what a So he said he was high on the stand? Yeah, he said he was high right now. He needed some water. But and is he lo- was he locked up? I, I have no idea. How did he get high if he in jail? I don't know. I he think was he was a jail. witness. He was a witness. Okay. So he obviously got high before he came to court and yeah, let I'm everybody scared. know it. I would think the judge would be like, get off the stand. Yeah. Go on and sit down or go home and lay down and dismiss yeah, but That's going to hurt them in an appeals process because if they claim that he was high when he testified, is that uh, testimony credible? Right. So that would be a good thing on the side of Young Thug, right? I don't uh-huh. know whose side he was testifying on. Was he testifying on the side of Thug or on the side of the prosecution? He was called by the process. I'm not sure, but I think if he was high and the opposing side was interviewing him, that's... Yeah, I think either way it would be disqualified. Yeah, he shouldn't have been up there anyway after he said he was high and needed some water. They gave him a bottle of water and let him continue testifying. That's mm. that's crazy. All right, y'all, we're going to wrap up the hot spot on that note, but coming up next, we got the praise mixed down with the White Stone. The time now is 25 minutes before the top of the hour. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning hey, Show. Bro.